Why has Labour, official Labour, not former Labour ministers, but today's Labour Party not been one of the voices speaking loudly about surveillance that may appear to have got out of hand? The Intelligence and Security Committee has said that it's going to review all of these matters. I've seen that one of my colleagues, David Blunkett, in recent days has made clear he wants RIPA to be looked at as part of that review. But RIPA being the legislation, the that, legislation covers that covers a lot of this. And in that sense, that's perfectly appropriate for the ISC to look at. But there is a process that's underway. If I recollect, the uh, heads of the agencies are going to be in front of a public hearing of the ISC in the days ahead. So in that sense, uh, there, is, there are processes that are underway in the United Kingdom to look at exactly these issues. Yeah, but that's a pretty sort of uh, detached view, isn't it, and, or, and, and process heavy. There's an in-principle point here, isn't there, which is, and I take your point, got, you can't talk about the Americans, but here's GCHQ. The documents are pretty clear that it's been engaged in this mass surveillance of regular people's emails, metadata, phone calls, etc. Labour, surely, you'd expect the opposition to have a view on that. That's a, that's yeah. a, there's, a, there's a threat to civil liberties there, isn't there? And a responsible opposition recognises that what matters actually is the policy because that's what will determine what is the appropriate balance between liberty and security. And in that sense, if you're saying, why are you not playing politics, why are you focusing on the policy, then I plead guilty because the policy no, but is calling for a change in the policy. Because the policy is ultimately both the guarantor for the citizen in terms of privacy and the right checks and balances being in place and also the basis on which the citizenry can also feel confident in the conduct of the agencies. But do, do you feel the policy is right at the moment or does it need a change? Well, it's being reviewed and is being looked at and it's perfectly appropriate that that should happen given the very widespread concern that's emanated from the revelations within The Guardian and the other newspapers that have published this evidence. Before we leave this, your constituents, should they be worried by what they've heard and have, has been revealed about the privacy and security of their own data? I've, I've had contact with constituents who have told me that they're worried and in that sense part of the task, the vital task of our intelligence agencies is contingent upon sustaining the consent and support of the British public. And for that reason, as well as for reasons of that delicate and necessary balance between liberty and security, it's important that there are continuing efforts made. I think while the intelligence agencies have a responsibility, while the Intelligence and Security Committee has a responsibility, there's also a heavy burden of responsibility on ministers, because actually we're, we should not have expectations that agency heads are essentially public figures continually advocating on their own behalf. That's the rightful job of the ministers overseeing those departments. Uh, there has been some questions raised, there have been some questions raised in the in Parliament, not about the content of the revelations, but about The Guardian for revealing them, saying that The Guardian shouldn't have done that, that it was uh, in some ways threatening or compromising national security. What's your view on that? Listen, I'm not privileged to the information. I don't have access to the information that either The Guardian had in its possession or that the, the, the Guardian has published. Have. Yes, and as I say, I'm not in a position to judge the extent to which that has compromised individual uh, investigations that were underway or individual approaches. But listen, uh, there's a heavy responsibility on the government both to make sure that systems are secure where information is contained. Uh, and in that sense, I think that the primary responsibility moving forward rests with the government to make sure that they're offering both the assurances that are required and the explanations that are needed. Did The Guardian do the right thing publishing this story? It's for The Guardian to make those judgments, not for politicians. Indeed, I think, Jonathan, you would probably be the first person sure. to suggest that you wouldn't want a politician prejudging the decisions of an independent No, editor. but given, given politicians... In fact, I think you've written columns to I that have done that. on I many have done occasions. That. But given that politicians are out there condemning us for doing it, it would be quite good if, uh, if, well, if Labour politicians came out and said, look, this is... Uh, first of all, there is a free press, but also it's been a useful debate. Listen, the Guardian I believe started. in the free press. I don't think it would do The Guardian any favours and the Labour Party any favours <laughs> to suggest that we had a particular responsibility to The Guardian or to any other publication... It's for The Guardian to justify their conduct. It's for politicians to justify ours. Yeah, but a welcome debate. It's, good. it's a good thing this debate has started. The debate is inevitable given the technological changes that are happening. Uh, and in that sense, I think the right course is not to rush to instant judgment, but instead to use appropriate processes to make sure that the right systems are in place.